Hello, and welcome to Regex Genius, a software designed to help you build regular expressions with ease. I created Regex Genius to simplify the creation of regular expressions. I broke down the process of creating regular expressions into steps where you make decisions using words instead of expressions. This will allow you to think about Regex in a natural way. Simply choose an option on each screen that best fits the situation. And before you know it, you'll have created a complex regular expression. So I'm going to click here to start. And this is the first screen that you're going to be presented with, whether you just clicked here to start the software, or if you hit this restart button down here, which you'll find on every page. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in some email addresses up here in the test strings area because the test strings are what you want to create a regular expression for. So let's go ahead and do that. So I found this list of emails here, and I'm just going to copy a couple of them in there. Now, this is probably the most important step. You definitely want to get all types of test strings and so because I already know what an email should look like and what kind of characters could be in it, I know that this selection isn't quite complete. Like for example, laurajane12 at yahoo.com, I know that she might actually have a dot in her name like that. And revoked life may have say like a hyphen. So I wanna be sure that I account for all the different scenarios up here in the test strings. And it's really important that you do that to get the desirable result at the end of the process. Now there's one other thing that really jumps out at me. And it's the fact that I'm seeing that we're like yahoo.com, hotmail.com, things like that. And I know that sometimes there's a subdomain in there. So something like mail.yahoo.com. So I wanna be sure to include all of these things. So right now we're kind of in the research phase and you would want to get every example that you could into here so that you had all the information that you needed in order to create the best regular expression that you can. So the next step once we've found all of our test strings and done our research is to simply break it down line by line. Now what does that mean? That means that I want to start picking apart these different email addresses into separate parts. Like for example, an email address always has this at symbol. And before that, it always has a username. So let's start there with the username because that's the first part. So on the first line here, we're gonna wanna put the username. And then after that, we're gonna wanna put the at symbol. Now after that, there may or may not be a subdomain. So I wanna take note of that. I'm gonna say that uh, like there all right and after that there will always be a domain so in this case we can put uh, some domains here like yahoo.com or as you can see this one's in all caps like this now a domain is actually you're you're actually able to separate it out into different parts you have the domain and you have the dot com so what I actually wanna do is probably separate those two parts out. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna take that away and put it down here. Now, I suppose there's one other thing that we can look at, and that is sometimes a website could be in another country, like for example, this .com could be a .co.uk, or it could be like a .com.au. And so because some emails are going to have that, I actually want to include that as well. I'm going to put that down here. And now we're going to go through this uh, a little bit and we're going to put the necessary things that we need to, to create the right regular expression. Now, I just want to take note that this is definitely the hardest step of the whole process. So once you get this done, it's super easy to do after that. It's mostly just clicking on buttons. So the username, I'm going to put uh, an example username here that I think uh, has all the different characters that a username could. So laura.jane, and we have this dash here. So I'm going to put that here. 
I see that this one has an underscore, so I'm also going to put an underscore in there as well. So now what we have is we have a username with upper and lowercase letters, it has an underscore, a period, a hyphen, it has numbers, it has probably all of the characters that a username would. And it's important that we try to get all of those into here. Or you could even type out what you see there. What you put in this line is only for you. So keep that in mind. So you can put uh, some notes in here like has letters, numbers, and uh, some special characters. And that way later in the process you can take note of that. For me, I just like to put every example that I could find. So in this case, it was upper and lowercase letters, the period, the underscore, the hyphen, and the numbers. So that's the first part. We're breaking it down. The first part is always going to be the username. Now the next part is always going to be the at symbol. And so that's fine. We only need to put the at symbol there. We know what that is. Then we can say there may or may not be a subdomain. So I can say something like mail dot would be an example of a subdomain. So I'm going to put that there and then I'm going to put something in here for myself so that I know that I want to break this down. And also that this is optional. And what optional means is it means that this subdomain may or may not exist. Now after that we have some examples of some domain names here and that's fine. They may also include something like uh, hyphens and numbers as well. So that's pretty much all that a domain name can have in it. And so those are some domain name examples. Now in this dot com, I'm going to put a note here that I want to break this down and I'll explain that a bit more later. And also in this dot au, I also want to break this down and I want it to be optional. So now I have all of the notes that I need in order to create the best regular expression for an email address that I can. And I just want to emphasize again, this is really the hardest step, but all you have to do is look at it and break it down. What is this first part? Okay, this is a username and it's always there and it's comprised of these different characters. So that's what this first line is. What's the next thing? The next thing is an at symbol. That one's easy because it's always going to be there so we can just put an at symbol. What comes after that? Well, there may or may not be a subdomain. And that's what we're putting right here. That's why I said it's optional, because it may or may not be there. And so this is the way that I want you to think about these things. I want you to think about them in terms of in words, like, is it optional or must it exist? Things like that. All right. So let's go to the next step now. So now what happens is we have a breakdown of our first line right here. So this is the first line. This was the username that we put in to that first breakdown line. And now what we need to do is we need to make a decision. We can either break it down further or we can say it has any of these characters, exactly these characters, or either of these scenarios. So in this case, it looks like it has a wide variety of characters and we don't know exactly what it's going to be. And because of that, we want to choose any of these characters. If it had exactly like an at symbol, then we would click on exactly. But because it doesn't, we can choose any of these characters. So now we're presented with the builder screen. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to click on buttons or type things in in order to build what makes up this username. So this username is made up of letters, periods, numbers, hyphens, and actually I believe there's an underscore in there. So I want to make sure I don't miss that as well. So I'm going to click on more options because down here under more options, there's actually a few different buttons to help you out a little bit. In this case, this one says email user. And if you hover over it, you can see it says characters commonly found in the email username. So if I go ahead and click on that, it's actually just going to put all the regex stuff that I need up here. And I actually don't even need to type anything in this case, because this is going to account for all of the letters, the numbers, it's going to account for the underscore, the dash, 
There's a plus sign sometimes in some email addresses as well as the period. So just by clicking on that button, we can actually match the email username and go ahead and hit next. And now we're presented with a different screen that's going to allow us to choose how many of this thing there are. So in this case, we know that the username is always going to exist and it's going to have one or more of these characters. So all we have to do is click on one or more and that's going to put the plus sign up here. If it had say five characters, you come over to this exactly and you type five and it's just going to auto fill that in. But again, in this case, it has one or more. So we simply click on that button. Now down here, we have a little test area. And this is going to test just this little bit of regex. And so what do we want to test it against? Well, I'm going to paste those emails back in here and just include a couple of them. We just want to test the username because right now we don't have the full regex for the email address. So if I click test right now, it would still come up with some results. But as you can see, it would also match the domain name because that actually matches in this case. But we only want to test the username. So right now we're just breaking this down and right now we're only looking at the username. All right, and that's sort of like the power of the software is you're able to break it down into little chunks and test those little chunks. And then at the end of it, you're just going to end up with this big regular expression and you basically didn't have to really do much writing your own regex, you're really just making decisions. So let me go ahead and remove everything but the username because that's what we're testing right now. And now I can click test and as you can see we actually end up getting all three usernames. So that I, I know so I know right now that this is working and it's gonna match up with those usernames. So all I do is hit next and now we get to the next breakdown line. And this one's an at symbol. So this one's super easy because it's always going to be exactly the at symbol. So it's exactly that character. Now, instead of typing it up here, I'm actually going to type it. If you click on this more options, uh, I'm actually going to type it down here because what this box is going to do is it's going to auto escape any characters that should be escaped. So if you type a dot, up here and you can do that if you want to that's really like a wild card kind of thing okay and regular and regular expressions a period is not written like this a period is written like this and so if you're not sure which characters you should be escaping just simply type them down here like i'm going to type this period and show you what i mean when i click add it knows that the period needs to be escaped and it does that for you. So whenever you're not sure, go ahead and click on this more options, type whatever you want down here. Now for the at symbol, I'll just type it down here, but that one actually does not need to be escaped. Now you're gonna see that some of these buttons are now a different color, and that's because you can't click on them. Regex Genius knows that when you're working with exact characters, you don't want to be including character ranges. And so it's not even going to allow you to screw that up by clicking on something that's not going to work anyways. And so that's why some of these buttons look different right now, because they're not options that are relevant to the match type, which in this case, as you can see, is exact. So I'm going to hit next. And in this case, I only want one of these. So you could type exactly one, but it's actually not necessary and a bit verbose, but it also won't hurt anything. So if this seems a little bit overwhelming, then don't even worry about it. Go ahead and put a one here. But in this case, I know that I just don't need to. And so I'm just going to hit and I also know that I don't need to test uh, the at symbol itself. You can if you want to, but it seems a little redundant. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And as you can see, this is adding it to our final regular expression. And at the end, we're actually going to get to a different screen where you can test the whole thing. But right now, this is kind of showing you the process as you go. So now we're getting to this line that says mail dot. So this is where the subdomain's coming in. 
Now, subdomain is optional, and that's something that I want to keep in mind for later because later Regex Genius is going to ask us, is this something that's optional? And we're going to want to know if it is or if it isn't. In the case of a subdomain, it is optional. And the reason it's optional is because it's not always there. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. And that's a real common thing uh, when you're dealing with regular expressions. And that's why I wanted it to include it in this way so that you can think of it as something that's optional. I don't want you to think about it in the terms of what is the regular expression for something that's optional and think about weird characters. I want you to think about it in plain English. Okay, so I know that's optional. I'm going to keep that in mind. The next part is break this down. As you can see, there's a bolded link here that says break down further. So I'm going to go ahead and click on break down further. What that's going to do is it's going to take us back to the original screen. And now the test string is this mail dot with this break this down in optional. And what I can actually do now is I can type here mail and dot. And in this case, mail is actually uh, part of a domain name, basically. So I'm going to make that like a little note. Uh, so that means that it could have like, you know, letters, numbers, and it could also have uh, hyphens. And so I just want to make a note of that uh, so that I know later. So we're basically kind of going into a loop now where we're breaking this down into almost like it's totally entirely separate regular expression that's going to get added to our larger regular expression. And the reason that I want to break this down is because in this particular case, I want to make sure that there's uh, the domain, the domain matching stuff here, and then the period is after it. So I, d I don't want it to be uh, some words dot some other words dot uh, this dot that. I don't want it to be something really long like this. I only want it to be uh, uh, some some characters followed by a period. And that's why I'm breaking it down. So breaking it down is a powerful way to get more specific about how you want the regular expression to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. And now we just go through the same process to create this smaller regular expression inside of our larger one. So now what we're going to do is just look at this mail, part of a domain name, letters, numbers, etc. So that means it has any of these characters. It has any letters, numbers, and things like that. And in this case, you can actually go ahead and hit uh, the legal domain name characters button, and it's actually just going to fill that in for you. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Let's click on letters, numbers, and I also know that there's dashes inside of a domain. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add and hit next. Now. There's always going to, if there's a domain name there, there's always going to be at least one character. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit one or more. And now I want this to match anything that's legal to a domain. So that could be like this, like this. It could be like domain. Could, these could be capitalized. Uh, there could even be like a number here. So let's put a, a number. So these are all legal. Uh, domain name characters. So I'm going to go ahead and hit test and they all come up. Uh, and so I know that this is working as I want it to. So let's go ahead and hit next. And now we have the period here. So the period is always going to be there exactly like that. There's always going to be a period. It can't be any other characters. So we simply click on exactly these characters. And once again, because we clicked on exact, we're not allowed to put ranges in now. We have to put the exact characters. So I'm going to go ahead down here to the auto escape and put a period, click add, and it adds that and it escapes it for us because that is an escapable character. And I don't think I need to test a period, so that's fine. I'm just going to hit next. Okay, remember when I said that keep in mind that we had noted it was optional? Well, here we go. This is why we needed to know. So in this case, the subdomain is optional, which means that it's not always going to be there. And so we can just hit no. And now it's going to create the regular expression for us right here. 
and stick it inside of our larger one basically. Okay, so the next thing we have is our uh, domain name. So I'm gonna go ahead and go a little faster now. I'm gonna hit any of these characters, domain, next. And there's always gonna be at least one character. So once again, I can hit one or more. And now we have the .com. And I wanna break this down because I wanna make sure that the period always comes before the letters. So let's just do that, .com. And the period is exactly a period. And I don't really need to test the period. And the com can be any characters, but, but it can only be letters because there, there's no dot C8, right? It's not like, there's nothing like that. There's only ever going to be letters. And now this is also important. Most TLDs only have up to four characters. Now there's some crazy extensions out there now I know that have more, but traditionally in most main email websites and things like that are only going to have between two and four characters. So I'm actually going to type between two and four here because I want to make sure that I'm only capturing things that are like .com and not something that's like .computer, although that probably now exists. We're not going to account for that kind of thing in this particular regular expression. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Okay, this .com must exist, yes. So this is not optional. Now, what is optional is .au. And I'm just going to break this down. And the reason for that is because you have username at domain.com. That part's not optional. This always exists. But sometimes there might be a .au. And so this one is optional. So something to keep in mind. So I'm going to break it down, .au, like so. And the dot is exactly that. So I'm just going to type it right in here. And I'm not going to test the period. Uh, any of these characters, and this can only be letters. And once again, it can only be between two and four. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And this one is optional. So I do want to hit no in this case. And here you go. Here's the regular expression that you created without really having to type any of these characters. As you can see, this is uh, pretty confusing looking, and yet you didn't really have to type any of that stuff. All you had to do is think about what you wanted and make some simple decisions. Let's go ahead and copy some of these. I'm gonna copy this first part here and then just a couple of lines like so. Go ahead and hit test. And as you can see, this first line isn't showing up here, but we do see the Laura, we have revoked, we have miss, uh, you know, you could probably pause this and, and check yourself, but, but uh, let's go ahead and skip down to the bottom couple. We have Manji, we have, Franklin, I guess, and Devlicious. So it all appears to be here. So as you can see, by making some simple decisions, we were able to create this. Now imagine trying to just write that yourself versus just doing it this way. Now we went relatively slowly in that example, uh, and that's because I was explaining it, but and so it did take a minute to create that, but actually once you get the flow of things, it can go a lot faster. So, all right, so in that last example, we went relatively slowly. And so I'm just gonna quickly blaze through an example so you can kind of see how this works once you get the hang of it and the flow of it. So I'm just gonna match this URL. And I'll stick another one down here and add in a few little things like, a URL might not have the S, it might have the www, things like that. So let's break it down line by line. So there's always going to be HTTP. Sometimes there's going to be an S. Uh, there's always going to be a colon slash slash. Sometimes there's going to be a www. And then there's going to be a domain name. Uh, then there's going to be a dot and a com or or something similar to it and let's just match the domain name in this case 
you could go on and add a slash path as well if you want, but in this case, I think that's enough. So there's always gonna be an HTTP, okay. HTTP, add, hit next, next. The S is optional, hit uh, the S there. I'm gonna tick this optional button because like I said, it's optional. This is not optional. It's always gonna be exactly those characters. So just stick that in here. And I'm not testing a lot of these things because uh, it's just one thing uh, and it's, it's very simple. So I don't really necessarily need to. So the www, it would show up exactly like that. And so we can hit exact again. And that is optional. As you can see, I put that little tag there. So click on that button, hit next, and the domain. So domain, it could be letters, it could be numbers. So it's any of these characters. And we actually have a button right here. So I'm just gonna hit that, hit next. And of course the domain's always gonna have one or more characters in it, right? So go ahead and hit next. Then there's going to be a dot, which is exactly a period. And there's only one, so I don't need to click on any of this stuff. And com, com can be any letters. So any of these characters and letters. And it can only be between two and four. So hit next and there you go. So we were able to pretty quickly create this particular regular expression, which if we did it right, it should match. It should match this. So let's actually put another example in here. Let's let's remove the the s. Let's uh, let's put a www in this one and see if we can get uh, three results here. And there you go. So we we're able to get the HTTPS version, uh, the one without the s, and the one with the www, just by making some simple decisions and. There you could see that once you get into the flow of things, you know, it can you, it goes a lot faster than say the first one we did. And that's pretty much it. That's Regex Genius. So just keep some things to keep in mind. Regex Genius was created with the intention that you can think about Regex using words. Think about words such as like, is this optional? Uh can't like it are the are the letters exactly like this? Or could they be maybe uh, these letters, like any of these, like maybe any letters, any numbers, things like that. Uh, does the situation have maybe like an either or statement? There's a button on here for either. And so you could say, you could, we, I guess we could have said HTTP uh, and said either HTTP or HTTPS. Let me show you a quick example of that. Uh, I'll say HTTP or HTTPS hit next, see we have this either of these scenarios. So we could say exactly HTTP or exactly, uh, we'll make this capital. And then when I hit next, it's going to now say uh, HTTP or the capital version. So that's Regex Genius. And just before we go, I also want to mention that uh, there's going to be source code version will be available for this. And it will also have a source code video. This uses the XAML plugin. So that's, so you have to have a developer edition of UBot. You have to have the XAML plugin. I believe that's the only plugin. It's at least the only premium plugin. I'll list the plugins below, of course. And what this source code really is, is it's, it's a lot about uh, how I created this software like this, where we actually have these different scenes. So like this is a scene, uh, when you hit next, this is a different scene. When you click on one of these, uh, this is a different scene. So uh, if you're curious about that kind of thing and how I did that in XAML, then be sure to check that out because in the source code video, I'm gonna explain uh, exactly how I did that and everything else, of course, in the source code videos, I always try to go over everything I've done. So that's going to do it for this video. And thanks for watching.